Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Well, and welcome back. Work on the power supply has begun. This is the single rail part of the power supply, and it's pretty much complete. Now, as you can see, this is made up of discrete components and point to point wiring, but it works, and yeah, works really well. Now, this will give out regulated DC voltage, and there's a little thing here, a little control to regulate the voltage. I've also got a meter connected up, which will give me some indication of the voltage coming out. I need to make a proper scale for that and work out where the needle is going to be for each voltage on the scale, but let's just plug it in. I'm going to turn this control all the way down to nothing. Okay, that's on. And I've got this computer fan connected as a load. And as I bring the voltage up, you see the meter start to twitch. And soon it will be high enough to start the fan turning. They're struggling to move now. There we go. I can keep increasing the voltage. As you see, the meter goes up further and further in the fan. It gets faster. Now it's on the maximum voltage, and I don't exactly know what that is. It's somewhere around 13 volts. As you can see, it works pretty good. Now this whole mess of stuff over here is the split rail part. Now this um, split rail supply gives you positive voltage and negative voltage. And I'm using two adjustable regulator chips to do that. And that's controlled by potentiometers which I've got here. Now I learned an important lesson when I was wiring this all up. And that is... Don't take your wires for granted, or granted. I made this little circuit here, wired it all up, connected the transformer, and it didn't work properly. I just could not adjust the voltage, no matter how much I twiddled this thing. It just didn't work. And I was literally going mad trying to figure out, pulling my hair out, just couldn't find what the problem was. I was going through all the connections, making sure that nothing was shorted out, making sure that everything was connected to the right place, making sure nothing wasn't soldered properly. Everything was exactly how it should be, and I couldn't find a problem. It didn't occur to me once to check that it might be a bad wire. Only as a last desperate attempt to try to find out what was wrong with this thing, did I check the wires. And I was thinking, this is all going to be alright, there's nothing wrong with these wires, it's going to be absolutely fine, and I'm still not going to know what the problem is. But anyway, the very first wire I tested was bad, which is this wire right here. Now this is supposed to connect this potentiometer to the ground, and it just simply wasn't doing that. It was connected at both ends, but wasn't conducting. So, I've disconnected that from the potentiometers, it's still connected here, but not going to anything anymore. And I put this wire in its place made sure it was good, and it worked absolutely perfectly. Now I'm just going to give you a quick demonstration of it with the meter. And I'll just connect up the circuit. I've got to make sure the negative regulator chip is connected up to the negative, and the positive one is connected up to the positive, or I'll blow this thing and have to order some new chips. And there's the negative connected up. Now I'll connect up the positive. Now, I've got the meter connected up to the output of the negative voltage regulator, but you can't really see it, so I'm just going to unclip it so it's showing in the camera. Oh, it's still not showing in the camera. There we go, there's a better angle. And when I adjust the potentiometers, you can see I can change the voltage. This goes all the way up to 24.5. Right, 24.6, and all the way down to 1.2, so. Quite happy with that. Now, connect up the positive regulator to the meter, and see what we get out of that. Now 
I can show you that this one is working. And as you can see, so um, all that remains now is to put all this into a box and oh yeah, put a couple of heat sinks on these regulator chips as well. Okay, now I'm designing a um, case or a box or whatever you want to call it. And this does kind of, I don't know, resemble a face or a house or something. I never actually intended it to look that way, but it just sort of turned out like that. But here is where the output terminals are going to be. This is where a power switch is going to be. These are where the potentiometers to regulate the voltage are going to be. And these two windows here are the um, where the meters are going to go. I'll probably also put in an LED to tell that it's on. Now if we take a closer look inside, here you can basically see where everything is going to be placed. I've got to make this quick because my battery is about to run out. And there's the single, single rail voltage power supply there. And there's the split rail supply there. Still haven't found a couple of heat sinks to put on the uh, voltage regulator chips. I did pull these ones out, but they're not going to fit. They just uh, get in the way. So, i have to find a way around that. And I've also gone to put a fan in it as well. So I might just as well use that computer fan. That's going to help cool the regulators down and everything. So, tomorrow, get myself some glue and some screws and things. Got plenty of wood laying around. Build this all into the box. And I'll have a nice little power supply. Anyway, that's just about it for this episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Remember, if you like these videos, click this box right now to go to my channel. Or, if you want to see the previous episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop, click on the box on the right. And I'll see you next time, so until next time, goodbye.